Welcome back everyone and we are continuing with our exercise theme. So, so far we have discussed the general principles around exercise and what to expect with uh, blood glucose levels in type 1 diabetes when exercising. And we've also looked at some of the nutritional strategies you can take to prevent hyperglycemia and what to do if your blood glucose levels are running high prior to the session. Now we're going to get into what you can do with your insulin. Now obviously you have two types of insulin, you have your background insulin or your basal insulin and you have your rapid insulin. Now again, we can do something with both and we're going to start with that basal insulin, the background insulin and we're going to look at both what to do with the pump and if you're taking injections. So as with all of this, there are general rules that we can advise and then the key is testing how you get on based off those general principles and then fine tuning it to what you see when you do the exercise. Because as I said before, everyone will exercise slightly differently for different durations at different intensities and different frequencies. So it's impossible without sitting down one to one and looking at the specific data to advise how to do it specifically for every individual. And even then, even if we sat down, not every session is gonna be the same, and thus what worked yesterday might not necessarily work tomorrow for a different type of session. So really with this, we're trying to do our best, um, prevent high pose, but also prevent particular highs. And we do have a reasonable bandwidth that we can try and aim for. Somewhere between eight and 14 tends to be pretty good. Um, and if you're dropping below that eight, you can always eat, like we mentioned in the last video, to just help uh, prop up those glucose levels. So anyway, let's talk about the background insulin then. So we'll start with pump. Now, as we mentioned, when we talked about pumps and subcutaneous injections, pump users have much more flexibility when it comes to their background insulin in particular. In fact, also with their rapid insulin, but particularly this uh, basal insulin is really where I think for me personally, the pump makes the difference. Um, and this is because we can reduce the amount that we give or increase, um, but in this instance, we'll be reducing. Um, and what you can do is you can set a temporary basal rate for your pump. So about an hour, an hour and a half before you commence the session, because we always act before we're gonna do something in diabetes, um, rather than waiting until you start, because then it will take a little bit of time for that reduction to kick in. So we wanna give it a time to kick in, ideally uh, aligning it just nicely with the start of the session. So about an hour, an hour and a half beforehand, you set a temporary basal reduction. Somewhere in the region, this is quite a big bandwidth to be fair, somewhere between 20 and 80%. And the reason that's such a big bandwidth is because like I say, we just don't know how you're gonna be exercising. If you know you're gonna go and put a bit of a shift in in the gym, then my recommendation would be starting at 50%. If you're just going for a gentle stroll, but you're gonna do it for quite a while, maybe an hour or so, maybe go 20% and see how you get on. If you do find that you're hypo or you're hypo later, then perhaps actually you needed a bigger reduction. Um, so somewhere in that bandwidth, but most of the journal articles and research that I do starts at around 50, but of course then that doesn't account for the people that aren't doing um, as intense or as long duration exercise. So we can set that temporary reduction. And in fact, you can even program your pump to have rules so you can just set your exercise rule and this will kick in automatically. So that's the first thing. The other thing you can do with a pump is you can take it off because obviously if you're going swimming or you're playing contact sports, then having a pump on you can be a bit of a hindrance. Um, so we can take it off and usually the recommendation is for about up to an hour. Now, obviously, depending on what type of exercise you're doing, you might not necessarily burn up enough glucose to compensate for taking it off. And therefore you might find you need to administer some rapid insulin when you, take, when you come out of the pool, for example, when you put it back on. Um, and check your glucose levels. If you're running high, you can do a couple of things. You can administer a normal correction dose as you normally would and just monitor strictly and just see how your glucose levels are going. Or there is some guidance, um, I think it's on Medtronic's website, that suggests you can administer up to 50% um, of your basal insulin, your background insulin, as a rapid acting bolus. So kind of like a correction dose, but you take 50% of your um, basal insulin dose, but as a rapid insulin uh, bolus. Now I must admit, just advising that kind of as a throwaway comment makes me a bit uneasy. So don't go straight up to 50% perhaps, see what works for you. Maybe start with the corrections as normal. Um, see how that goes, because you can always add in extra corrections later if you need to. Um, but 
like I say, really the trick to this is getting the data and seeing how you respond. But you can take it off, um, but just be strict with the monitoring afterwards. So that's pump. Injections. So this is a little trickier because obviously you don't have the luxury of increasing and decreasing your background insulin. Once it's injected, it's injected. So the first thing we wanna think about is the type of insulin. And the reason I mention this is because some insulins are very long lasting. Um, we've covered this in our long acting insulin video. So insulins like Traceba and Tegeo, super long lasting. Traceba, for example, can have a lifeline up to 42 hours. Therefore, any reduction you make you won't see for three hours, uh, sorry, three days into the future, which isn't great if you're trying to adjust it for exercise tomorrow. And of course, then you can't adjust it three days in advance because the two days in between that, you'll be running high, so not ideal. So with the type of insulin, ideally we wanna be choosing a slower or um, uh, an insulin that acts for shorter duration. So something like Levomir, which has an onset of about um, sorry, not an onset, has a duration of about 18 hours, maybe up to 20, but maybe administering that as a twice daily injection, which is again, another injection I know, but it does give you some flexibility because then you can give, say, more in a day and less overnight or vice versa, depending on um, what your glucose levels are doing. The other alternative is using an even shorter duration insulin like the old basal insulins, like an insulatide or a humulin I, which lasts about 12 to 16 hours, and they will be administered twice a day. Again, it's an extra injection, but it does give you that flexibility to adjust the insulin based um, on what you're doing and what your glucose levels do. And if you have any discrepancies between daytime and nighttime, you can adjust it. Then tying in with that, we can start to think about, can, would you do a reduction with your basal insulin? Usually, probably not. For most people's exercise habits, you probably wouldn't. Um, but some people do find it beneficial, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But for most people, the reduction will come with their rapid insulin. And the other thing, just tying into both of those points, is the time of, day, time of day you take your basal insulin. So actually, if we just turn the page here, um, and I'll just grab the pen here. So if we just think about it, okay? So how will we do this? So let's say, um, you've got uh, 12 a.m. and then you've got 12 a.m. so we've got a full day mapped out here. Now you might and let's say uh, 12 p.m. here which will make this about 6 a.m. that'll make that about 6 p.m. Okay so first of all when is your insulin due? So let's say you take it in the morning, so about 8 a.m. So insulin is here. So this is your basal insulin, right? So you're gonna take the dose here, and then if we just grab another pen, let's say it's a 24 hour, let's say it's Lantus, 24 hour lasting, okay? So that's just gonna track till the next day, and then it's gonna start to just die off about there. And then you'd have to give another injection. So then let's say you know you're gonna to go to the gym, it's a weekend, and you're gonna go exercise here, 1 p.m. But you know it's gonna be quite a big session and usually you find that you hypo regardless of what you're doing with your rapid insulin. So you say, right, I'm gonna reduce that dose before this exercise session. So rather than give a dose up here, actually the dose is gonna be more here, so you've reduced the dose. And then it's gonna trail off like that. Now, that's great because during the exercise session, it's gonna help you reduce the risk of hypo. So this area here is all good. But once that exercise session has worn off, you've got scope to be running high here, here, and here overnight. So that's not gonna give you appropriate coverage as what you normally need. This is assuming your background insulin is usually correct. So yes, it prevents the hypo here, um, but those other areas after the exercise has worn off isn't gonna give you much coverage, okay? But let's say then that you take your insulin the night before. So actually insulin's due around 8 p.m. So same thing, you wanna reduce your insulin. So this time you reduce it and again, all the way across and it just dies off here. So insulin is here. So once again, same problem. So during 
um, this period, you're good. But all the other periods before that, you're running high overnight, and then you're running high upon waking, so you're having to rely on your rapid insulin to help you out. Oops, sorry, in here. Up until that exercise session when actually finally the reduction makes a difference, which is the reason we don't necessarily suggest um, reducing your background insulin, particularly if you're taking a 24 hour. Now, if we plotted another graph up here, now this time you're taking a twice daily insulin. So let's say it's 11 mir, um, same time frames, just up here, same time frames. So uh, let's say you take the insulin here this time and here, because it's twice a day now. So 11 mirrors in, that's gonna last you about 18 hours. And then you take the second dose at a reduced dose, and that's gonna last you to about here. So you can see you've got the 24 hour coverage, but you've got a smaller dose overnight to prevent hypos, and you've got a bigger dose in the day to compensate for those daily activities like eating, even though it's not a food insulin, um, but it can help you reduce glucose levels because obviously there's more things affecting your glucose levels in the day like food. Now, let's say you had an exercise session of an evening. What you can do then is know that you're gonna have this prolonged effect of exercise into the night, which might wear off around here. So then we can reduce that background insulin, the second dose, to compensate for the exercise effect, reducing the risk of hypos because that first dose has worn off, give or take. So it's just a nicer way of um, approaching it. If you use something like Insulatard or Humulin I, the effect is even more, um, even shorter. So this time you might only get 12 hours of coverage, in which case, then obviously if you have your exercise session here, that first insulin's worn off and then you can really take a reduced dose which is gonna have no bearing really on that first insulin dose. So you can take a reduced dose and it just leads you into the next day quite nicely. So you're much more flexible with regards to exercise. So if you're serious about exercise, this can be a nice strategy to work with, although it's more injections and you may meet some resistance from your diabetes team. Um, and also something I talk to my patients about is the fact that um, obviously, if you haven't got 24 hour coverage of your insulin, you've got a much lower threshold for problems occurring. Like if you miss a dose, forget a dose, you can end up in trouble quite quickly with high glucose levels, ketones forming, and it can push you into diabetic ketoacidosis if um, you're not getting that appropriate coverage because you're just a bit forgetful. Whereas the once a day or the super long acting insulins like Traceba and Traceo, once it's in, you're covered for a good couple of days. You still need to take it every day, but you can be assured that should you, for whatever reason, miss a dose, which we really don't recommend, um, the same problems wouldn't occur for maybe a day and a half, two days, as opposed to quite quickly with these 12-hour uh, insulins. Um, Levin me, you got a bit longer coverage, but it's still not ideal from a coverage perspective. But in terms of exercise, and if you're serious about it, I'd definitely be moving more towards a shorter duration, probably 11 mir, 18 hour coverage, twice a day, as opposed to the super long acting insulins, just to help offset the um, effects of exercise. But really for your recreational athlete, who's just going to the gym or going for the odd jog, you're not gonna need to be playing around with your basal insulin. This is more for the athletes out there or the people that are really serious about their sport and are really going out and burning up some glucose over a prolonged period then this um, is going to be a good strategy that you can use. The other thing to think about as well is actually how often are you doing it? Because obviously if this is something, if you exercise every day, then you won't need to touch your basal insulin because your requirement will just be your requirement based on your activity levels. It's when you become a bit more sporadic with it, so you might do a day on and then a day off and then a day on and a day off. That's when obviously on the days off, you're not gonna be using up as much glucose, so you're gonna need more insulin and the days that you're exercising, you'll need less insulin. So then you're gonna to have to start coming up with specific rules about exercise and non-exercise. So the more frequent you are with it, the easier it actually becomes. But obviously it's probably harder in the long way round because you're having to exercise every day. So it's, uh, <laughs> so you know, it's all, it depends which way you look at it. But these are some of the strategies you can think about with your basal insulin. But if you are taking injections as opposed to pump, 
My much preferred strategy is rapid insulin, which we're gonna be looking at in the next video. Pumps, you can still benefit from the rapid insulin video because you still should be considering reducing your rapid insulin based on your exercise habits. So let's park that there and then we'll move on to the rapid insulin in the next video. So we'll see you there.